I think for a lot of people, just the idea of gold and silver, just fundamentally is just, I, I don't want some of my wealth in the hands of these large corporations. I don't want it in the hands of mutual funds, you know, or all these companies that are just charging me fees. Like I want to know where some of my wealth is. I want to understand where some of my wealth is. Hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Inspired Conversation. As you know, uh, your well-being on all levels, spiritual, uh, physical, mental, financial, uh, is very important to us. And so we're excited to welcome back one of the experts out there today, a great partner and friend of ours, the founder and CEO of Noble Gold Investments, Colin Plume. Thank you so much for joining us again today, sir. Gene, thanks for having me on. Always, always good to be here. I know there's a, a lot happening in the world and a lot of people are uh, curious about what's going to happen over the next few months and the, and the future. And so I think it's a good time for us to, to chat about those things. I agree. I actually checked, Colin, our last conversation was on June 27th and um, I checked the gold price. Uh, for June 27th, which was at 2,296. And then I checked the gold price for today, early September, as we're recording this, it's 2,486, which is a 8.2% increase in less than three months. Yeah. Um, you know, this is actually a high value for a conservative investment like gold. Yeah. This is a huge leap in a very short period of time. But the truth is, that more and more people are looking into safe havens, like you say, and there couldn't be anything more traditional, more conservative and more longstanding than gold. So what do you see in terms of interest? Uh, are people jumping more onto these safe havens? And what do you say to that 8.2% leap in just, I don't know, 10 weeks? Yeah, no, it, it, it's moved quick. I mean, I, I, you know, I was talking a lot about $2,500 gold last year um, and people thought I was a little unhinged or, or maybe drinking, drinking too much of the Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it made sense. Um, you know, the demand is the central bank demand has been high this year alone, almost 500 tons of gold purchased by central central banks. Um, which is, we'll see, could be this year, could be an all time high for buying. So you have all these central banks and, and really it makes sense because they've, they, they're divesting from the dollar and bonds, U.S. bonds. And so where are they going to put their money? They're looking for, for places to put their money. So central banks have been buying a tremendous amount of, of gold. Um, and you also have a flight to safety. And I think that's the biggest thing that people are concerned in this election year um, you know, we know the Fed's going to drop rates at least once this year, um, how that's going to affect people's money. And, and so the, the markets are sort of, they've priced in, uh, a lot of the things that they anticipate to happen. And, and, you know, when rates drop, you know, last time we had rates significantly hit a high and then drop was, was 2008, 2009. And, you know, everybody remembers that financial bubble. Uh, that burst and there was no credit out there and the banks were falling apart and, you know, institute, you know, longstanding institutions were going out of business because um, we just created this unbelievable bubble and they dropped rates and they opened up the money supply. They did quantitative easing phase one, phase two and phase three. And when that happened, gold went on a on a historic run and, and so did silver. So I think a lot of people were sort of anticipating that with this rate drop happening, they're, they're opening up the money supply and they expect that we're going to go on a, you know, two to three year uh, bull run in the markets. Um, and that's, you know, regardless of whoever, you know, obviously gets an office. So that's that's one factor. You know, the other factor is depending who, who becomes president, that could vastly change the landscape of of everyone's financial future in so many different ways because you know these two candidates have very different views of how to grow the economy and so because of that people are concerned you know they don't they don't know which way to go 
And so you have banks not really lending money to, to businesses, not really lending money on, on, on real estate, not pretty much staying out of the market. And, you know, people are just laying low and, and sitting in cash, yet cash rates are going to drop. You know, they're going to drop next month. They're going to continue to drop. So, you know, I anticipate by next year, we're probably going to be in the low threes, maybe high twos in banks. And, you know, if inflation is any indicator, seven, eight, nine, ten percent, which is probably real inflation, uh, you know, a high two percent rate in the bank is not going to cut it. So I think people are anticipating that and they're moving into other assets and they're they're looking for ways to keep up with the, you know, dramatic costs of, of everything day to day. Um, and, and so that's why I think we saw gold, you know, really surge. We are also in a vastly different geopolitical situation as we were 16 years ago. Um, the dollar as a reserve currency is losing its status by the day, by the Correct. minute, you could say. Correct. So the things that we had going for us in 2008 are eroding or have eroded down to very little substance. So uh, the volatility is much, much higher and the fallout, I think, will be much, much higher. And we're, of course, in an, in an in insane amount of debt, uh, $36 trillion and counting. So the situation to me, it's like it's much more dire than it was. And it was bad then. And I personally, and that's what I keep sharing, I personally and my wife and I, we we don't feel as good about any investment as we do about gold and silver. That's like the, that's the peace of mind for us, literally, as, as we've been watching. And what, what a lot of people don't know, Colin, is they think that you, that the only way to buy gold and silver is either to buy the paper gold, which, you know, or to actually buy physical gold and store it. But there is, there are all the same advantages, tax saving advantages as to other retirement instruments apply to gold also like a gold IRA, but a lot of people don't know this. Can you talk a little bit about these instruments and how they might help people? Yeah. Right? So starting in 1987, they, they allowed gold to be put into IRAs. Um, you know, 401ks and IRAs really started, you know, in the late seventies. And when we went through heavy inflation, you know, the Reagan administration believed that we should have an alternative investment, another option. Um, they just didn't feel comfortable just only allowing stocks. And so they started to open it up to other investments. So they started to allow, you know, phys physical precious metals in your IRA. Um, but I don't think it really became what it was until, you know, after 9-11, you saw a lot of people and, and the government sort of since 9-11 to today is has it's not the government of the 70s, 80s, you know, before that, you know, they've created all these bubbles. And so through all this money printing and, you know, all the debt that we've created, um, which it, it's mind blowing to me that we've created this much debt since 2001, because, you know, you would think before that we would have had a lot of debt. We went through, we went through multiple world wars we went through Vietnam, we went through the Korean War, we went through the Cold War, and yet we've caused more debt in the last 23 years than in the 100 years before that, uh, 150 years before that. Um, and the Pentagon and the, the DOD regularly canned account for trillions of dollars. We don't know where it went. It's we don't know, like, exactly. Sorry, accounting issues. <laughs> yeah, we've gone... We just spiraled out of out of control. Uh, and, and now every, you know, some of these things that we see that they're trying to do is, you know, these handouts or these bailout uh, type policies, um, you know, that we know don't work. And, and, and I'll, I'll tell you one specific example is, you know, all the money that was given out during COVID credit card uh, debt dropped for a very short amount of time. And now, you know, many years later, we have the highest credit card debt in the history, consumer debt in the history of the world, over a trillion dollars. So it, instead of, you know, focusing on getting our debt down and building a strong economy, you know, we, we try to find these shortcuts and, you know, the shortcuts don't work. They really do fail us uh, long term. Um, 
And so I think that's a big reason why gold is and silver really come into play is that people, they don't have the trust in the government that they once did. They don't believe that they're acting in their best interest. I mean, if, if you look at, you know, a lot of the wealth in this country, um, you know, a lot of the wealth in this country is outside of Washington. And the thing about having a lot of wealth outside of Washington is it's, it's all committees, it's all political, it's all people that are connected to the government, but those jobs, those people that are millionaires that live around Washington, they do not create jobs and they do not create GDP. They, they or value for that matter. or value, right? <laughs> And so you have all this wealth in the places that don't create wealth, unfortunately. And that's that's the scary thing about what this economy, that's the new economy. And a lot of that has been cr created in the last 20 years is is wealth around the government. And and that's you know what we're seeing. And so I think for a lot of people, just the idea of gold and silver just fundamentally is just, I, I don't want some of my wealth in the hands of these large corporations. I don't want it in the hands of mutual funds, you know, or all these companies that are just charging me fees. Like, I wanna know where some of my wealth is. I wanna understand where some of my wealth is. And I wanna do something that's a little bit simpler to understand. And so you're right, you know, gold and silver can be put in an IRA. It is what we do. You know, it is a big part of what we do at Noble Gold Investments. We have a team that does all that uh, paperwork uh, and all that heavy lifting for you. So it is something you can diversify and you do get all the tax benefits of, of any other investment um, that you have out there. And, and, and that's why it is, you know, very popular, uh, you know, especially right now as a, as a diversification is to, to get into something a little bit different. Um, whether you buy gold, silver, platinum, palladium, you're going to decide, you know, how much of each, um, we just get you there and then we, we help you through the process. And then we're there for you, you know, through the length of the account. If you ever have questions or let's say you retire and you want to get the gold delivered to your house or the silver, or you need to liquidate to, you know, fix a roof, you know, those are all the things that we do. Um, but we, we can definitely get you there and help you through that whole process. And I, I have to say that uh, consistently, our viewers give you all a five star rating. Thank you. Um, and, and all of that, making it easy, making it personal, making it human, which is a big, big deal in in a time of AI bots. Um, but Colin, there's a there's a, a really, really uh, big seismic shift that has happened in the geopolitical and in the economic power world. BRICS is now the singular economic power in the world. They are outshining everybody else. And they have announced that they will, uh, you know, they will base their currency or currency basket. We will see exactly how it plays out, but they will uh, back it to gold. Yeah. I mean, well, this, this is probably the biggest announcement in terms of gold. So this, this also means that the majority of the world will have a gold backed currency in the near future. Yeah. And that those are the developing countries, right? I mean, you know, they're meeting October 22nd, 23rd. And if you go to their website, it, it talks about their agendas. And part of their agenda is to move away from from the dollar, move away from treasury bonds, tra doing business within themselves, you know, really trading within themselves. Um, obviously, Russia has a very inherent reason for this because they're not able to trade with most of the world. But, you know, even China continues to trade with them. And, and the yuan has moved up the ladder in terms of usage in the world. Uh, the euro was very popular, uh, but right now the yuan is is moved up and it's one of the most popular currencies from China. Uh, but China behind the scenes, you know, China came out a few months ago that they're not going to buy gold. And I laughed because if you know anything about the gold business and you know anything about China, you know that they never tell you the truth. And if you look <laughs> at the, it, yeah, if you look at the 2000s, classic China in 2005 and six said they're not buying any more gold. And then in 2009, a report came out that their holdings had gone up by 65%. Well, obviously it didn't go by 65%, you know, a month before they were buying it the whole time. They were buying. And so, you know, when they told people now that they're not buying, uh, you know, I really thought it was funny that, you know, they, cause they, listen, you don't want to bid against yourself, right? It'd be like going to an auction and bidding on a car 
and you know you have to buy that car and you just keep bidding up the price. So the message they want to send to the world is that they're out of the market because they're the Don't biggest buy. Price is, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But behind the scenes, you know, they love uh, strategic metals. They love gold. And, I mean, they're continuing to buy it. And they listen, silver there. They have to buy silver and silver mines because they are putting solar panels all over on all their homes. So they need silver. Um, it, it's a major component for them. Um, so, you know, they, they're sending a message, a PR message out there, but I think anyone that knows anything about politics and the way China works, uh, that they're, they're, they're trying to, they're trying to make sure that they don't have to overpay for, for all the metal they're going to need. Plus, you know, I think it's a little hard for us. We, we live in a world that is so focused here, uh, in the West, especially in the U S on the next quarter. And maybe the next year, China, you know, the, the, their traditional thinking is 50 to 100 years into right. the future. So their plans are right. long term. Right. And that's right. what we need to actually learn to think more long term. But you you, you, you mentioned something. You, you touched on silver, which, by the way, just from a, a sentimental standpoint, I have even I'm more of a heart for silver than I do for gold. I, I just don't know. But um, there is a fantastic uh, demand for silver that's going to continue to be there. You mentioned the solar industry, but there's also a brand new battery we talked off camera that Samsung's coming out. So uh, they're going to need uh, an extraordinary amount of silver. Can you talk a little bit about that and what you expect to happen in the silver market? Yeah, and and it's and you know I will say like whenever I talk about silver and you know electric vehicles, everybody gives me a hard time. And yeah, you know I like my gas. I like my gas car too. <laughs> you know I'm not dude. I love my V8. I, I but but you were talking about what the market's doing. Yeah, You're not saying the market. That. Is, yeah, and and also <laughs> like this is where things are going. And listen, as much as people love their V8, uh, just imagine where when gas you know prices hit twelve dollars a gallon. You, you may want to have a little, you know, EV car. No, the combustion around. engine can't be the thing of the future. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't we make know sense. this. Yeah. No, we know so this, this. This new Samsung battery, um, it's funny. I have a close friend, Randy, who loves his Samsung phone. And when we go anywhere, he'll take a picture. I'll take a picture. He'll take, you know, look at this. Your phone, it's terrible. You know, talk about the, the iPhone. <laughs> and so this story always makes me think of him and, and, the way that he's always telling me that, you know, Ameri that we're so dumb that we buy that the iPhone, even though the Samsung camera is 10 times better. I mean, it's just, he can take a picture of the moon and see the whole moon from his Samsung. So Samsung came up with this, uh, this battery, the single carbon battery, and it's, it's going to change the game for electric vehicles. Cause you know, the thing that people, every, everyone hate is just, uh, you know, charging, right. How long it takes to charge, how far you can go. Well, this battery is, is going to have a 20 year shelf life. So a much longer shelf life than the current batteries in these EVs. So that's the first thing. Uh, second thing, it's going to have a 600 mile radius. So that's probably double most of the, the radius. I mean, 600 miles. I don't know anyone. I don't know many people driving 600 miles in one day for, you know, day to day driving. I do, but that's about it. That's the limit usually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's usually the limit. And then um, the nine minute charge nine minute charge that's what they're projecting um i mean listen if you pump up your gas you're probably there for five minutes right yeah I you mean, go in you maybe go to the restroom grab something to drink and then th that's about 10 minutes yeah 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 so it's not going to be far off from from a gas car um so samsung came out of this battery it's got silver in it it's got silver and carbon and other metals obviously but silver will be a big component of this and so there's stuff happening you know, and that's just one singular use of silver that's continuing to grow. We've had a silver shortage for four years in a row. They haven't they haven't found enough silver for four years in a row. So people should really take a look at it and, and see and look at the charts. And, you know, my book is going to be coming out in the next 30 days. Um, silver is the new oil. And I'll be talking about all of these things that are happening out there. But uh, I think people, if they look at the charts and they, they really study and they think out five, 10, 15 years, um, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, I mean, he's a little bit out there in terms of it, but he, I mean, he said last week, the rich dad, poor dad guy, friends. Yeah, I know. mean, a very wealthy guy, yeah. very forward thinker. I mean, he's anticipating $500 an ounce silver. Um, I think that's pretty, that's an aggressive, uh, uh you know, but, but, but I know, but it is. Everybody, everybody who knows the market says it's so undervalued. Correct. 
Yeah. So we are, you know, even if it goes to 250, it'll still be a huge jump. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> or even if it goes, I mean, even today, if it breaks its all time high of 50 would be, you know, you double your money. So I, I you know, I think that it's, it's something that people should be talking about more. And I, and I think it's, I think silver, the opportunity is like when the Rockefellers got into the oil business in the late eight to 1800s, I, I truly believe there's going to be so much wealth created with silver in so many different forms. I mean, we've already seen it in solar. I mean, the amount of solar businesses that have popped up and then you add, then you add cars and solar continues to be. So it, it's exciting, you know, I, and I like this kind of technology that, you know, uh, the ultimate reason that we need to go in this direction is we need, we need independence from, from the Middle East. We need independence from other countries. We need to be able to support ourselves. I mean, we saw, how damaging it is to our economy during COVID when we're reliant on, on other parts of the world for the things that we need. So getting in, having solar, having more of our own energy source, starting to make more of our items here um, and, and controlling our own destiny and what we can live on in this country uh, makes us more self-sufficient. And it also keeps our costs down. And I think that's the biggest thing is that everybody that's moving to try to save money for retirement is trying to keep their costs under control so they can have the same quality of life, you know, going forward. And I think those are the things that gold and silver always, you know, always present is, is being able to keep up with the cost of goods and be able to keep up with the cost of healthcare and everything that's going up. You know, this yellow metal has been around and it's done it for a lot of people. Um, and, and I believe it will continue to do that. You know, Colin, you're just making too much sense. Are you su seriously suggesting that in this beautiful nation of ours that has all the resources you could possibly imagine and that has all the manpower and the, the ingenuity that we could possibly go back to a, a standard where we produce what we need, we we're all within our borders and we employ people and they have fulfilling jobs and actually we create a, a self-sustainable economy. Is that what you're suggesting? I, I you listen, I don't want to uh, recommend something too out there, but I do think it is possible. I do absolutely think it's possible. I, I think so too. I think, I think you're onto something. So um, like I said, it, for, for my wife and I, this is just personal, but the vast majority of our investments go, are going into gold and silver. That's what we're excited about. That's what we feel good about. If somebody right now, after, after listening to you and watching, says, um, listen, I, you know, I want to make sure that what I have worked for for so many years will be worth something or more when I'm ready to retire or ready to do something else. Um, how can they get started if they've never done anything with gold and silver? How can they get started right now? Yeah, I mean, the first thing to do is to get some education and talk to somebody at Noble Gold. So I would say give us a call, talk to get a representative and build a relationship, start to learn about them and why they you know, buy gold and silver. I mean, all of our team, they're invested here too. This isn't just, you know, they're, they're helping people get into it. So I would learn and build a relationship with somebody and start to ask all the questions you have from gold or silver, or how does it work? Where do I store it? How do I do the IRA? All this stuff you can get answered in a phone call, uh, talk to a, a nice person and, you know, really feel us out, check our reviews, spend time, you know, I, you know, I got interviewed earlier and they were like, what, what's new with Noble Gold? Like they wanted to ask me about like technology and like, where are you guys going with? And I was like, well, we're just getting, we're just refining our customer service and trying to get better every day. And it's not through bots and it's not through AI. It's actually just with more people. Like we, we're just growing with people and, and voices and people want to talk to people. So we're, sort of going in a different direction from from the norm and but i think people in today's world they they miss that and they want that they want that human connection so giving us a call getting the free guides letting us email you a lot of information learning about the company and then taking that first step i think is the best thing to do is get educated start to get our emails watch our youtube channels and then from there you know making a decision if it's something that's right for you uh, talking to your family, talking to friends and, and learning about it, looking at the charts um, and spending time with someone that is that does this. This is all we do is, is gold and silver. And 
learning from someone that that you know owns these items and sells these items um you know and you're gonna have a million what happens if you have to sell what if if you want to buy more whatever you're gonna ask we're gonna have questions answers for you and and i think getting educated is definitely the first place uh to start i i couldn't agree more and as i said uh our viewers who've gone through the process have given nothing but five-star reviews and are really happy and feel like they are um you know they found a home for their financial future questions and feel really good about it so uh, inspired i would encourage you noblegoldinvestments.com that's in the uh, description and of course the phone number give them a call check it out like like colin says it's an educational journey i i, I would never encourage anyone to uh, jump into something they don't know anything about where when you get comfortable and, and that's what we have done many years ago done our research and uh, we never look back it's always been something that we feel passionate about we think precious metals are here to stay six thousand years have proven that so that's all. And, and, and BRICS is proving it. And, and God knows what our own government will come up with or, well, the Fed will come up with. Maybe they'll even look at gold. Right. <laughs> well, Colin, uh, thank you so much. As always, it's always such a pleasure to listen to you. I love that you are you're always staying grounded. And so uh, usually when you predict, you know, it's going to go up a little bit, it goes up even more. You know it, but you don't want to you don't want to hype. I love that about you. That's a trust factor for me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I listen. I, I love what we do, and love talking to people, and 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 it's just great. It's it's you know I, I think I've mentioned a few. My father, you know, still close to retirement, but he's 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 a bad golfer, so he keeps working, and he loves <laughs> talking to people. Uh, and and he just always says, I just you know he's he's only he's Vietnam vet and and uh you know talk about retirement and, and but he's like what am i going to do i don't you know i can only garden so many hours and i go and and but he loves the people so as much as is we you know we appreciate and we appreciate these kind of relationships you know these long-standing relationships are are the key for me i like stability and so being a part of your show is great for us so i we appreciate it too and it's always a it's always a blessing to be on and and talk about what's happening in the world. And, and so we appreciate this, uh, this partnership also. Thank you, Colin. So do we very much. And I will say this, that finding a little bit of stability in an instable and world that in a world that's going crazy is, is good, especially when it comes to uh, financial future, people have invested their lifetime. They worked hard. Uh, yeah. They did what they were supposed to. So, um, they deserve to earn, to have the, you know, to, to have the fruits of their labor and not, um, you know, not getting everything eaten up by either inflation, taxes, or incompetence. So yeah. once again, uh, I want to thank you, Mr. Colin Plume, founder and CEO of Noble Gold Investments. Always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Jane. And Inspired Tribe, thank you so much for tuning in. You know, we love you. We appreciate you. And we will be back with you again very, very soon.